All right, we're up and running. I've got both cams up. That's good. Welcome to Start Building Me, my daily training session for people who have never exercised before, the youth, the whippersnappers, people who have just been couch like playing video games, watching movies their whole life, people who have been injured and are just trying to get on the bending trail, or people who have been out of the game for a while and want to make a comeback. Uh, exercise is mandatory, folks. Exercise every day. No ifs, no buts. Uh, you just need to reprogram your mind into thinking that it has to be some hard, arduous, spandex-clad hour at the gym and just uh, basically do this in the privacy of your own home. 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever you've got. Be programmed to the fact that if you like and subscribe to this channel, the Start Building Me going live thing can just trigger you to do it and you don't even have to come here and watch it. I have uh, seen oh too many uh, years of data showing how we spend an enormous amount of money in healthcare on sedentary lifestyle and overconsumption. The best way to undo that is exercise, folks. Exercise makes you lose weight. Exercise makes you digest your food better. Gets the juices flowing, folks. Uh, I will remember it when I say it eventually, but as I've often said in here, your body only works if you work it. So that's one of the slogans of Start Building Me. Your body can only work if you work it, folks. You cannot be healthy without exercise. People, oh, they squirm. They try to think of any excuse not to do it. Oh, I don't have time. Everybody has time to do this, folks. It's like saying, I don't have time to sleep. I don't have time to eat. I don't have time to go to the bathroom. It's just BS. Hey, 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 good to see you guys in the house. Uh, let's get cracking, because I want to watch a uh, uh, stream, House of Dragon and, uh, and House of, no. Yeah, House, House of Dragon and Power Book 3, uh, Rise of Canaan. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, you can see how enthusiastic I am about the shows really go into depth, really do my research into the shows and the producers, not. So let's get cracking. We'll start as always, pump the biggest muscles in your body, the biggest group of muscles being your posterior chain and your quadriceps. So your posterior chain comprising of your lower back, your glutes and your hamstrings, quadriceps and every other thing that uses stabilization and balances to do this. You've seen it all before, you've done it every day for your whole lives probably. Sitting down on the bed, standing back up. Sitting down on the toilet, standing back up. Sitting down at your desk at school, standing back up. Sitting down at your desk at work, standing back up. Sitting into the truck seat as a truck driver and standing back up. Um, sitting down on the stool to milk a cow, whatever it is. If you want to do it properly, you're sitting back into your heels with the weight going to the outside of your feet with your hands going out as a counterbalance and back up. Breathe in before you do it. Up and breathe out on the way out. So keep yourself taut. Out on the way up. Don't forget, the weight should really spread through your toes, going to the outside of your feet. Your feet have arches in them for a reason, folks. The weight goes into your toes to the side of your feet, back into the heels, like that. I am standing wide at the moment because it makes my back go down straighter. Otherwise, when I stand closer, my back goes forward like that, which is not a big deal because I'm not loading my back up like a barbell squat. I'm just doing my body weight. So as long as my back is neutral, i.e. it's not doing that and rolling, then it's fine. If you're doing that and you lean forward a bit and the back's still neutral, doesn't matter, folks, go ahead, whatever works. As I always say, I'm not a form stickler, so I'm not going to be, uh, you're not doing the repetition right, therefore don't do it at all. Like, you're never going to make progress that way. If you think of people who are perfectionists, they're just turning circles on the spot. They never get anywhere because they're striving for something that will never be, right? So the whole point is just to grease the groove as one of the start building me trainees says is you should be just the more you do something the more you rise through the four stages of competence unconscious incompetence un uh, conscious incompetence unconscious competence and conscious competence right so at the moment if anybody's just going up down uh, uh, down, I'll do the other way around maybe down up down up down up that's unconscious competence you just 
doing it and you're not thinking about it. But after a while, the more you do that, you'll be like, oh, okay. It makes it easier on my knees if the weight's going to the outside and then I feel more tension in my glutes and my butt pulls me back up at the bottom. So you're doing it unconscious, a conscious incompetence. So you're aware that you're not doing it right, but you're aware of sort of what's involved from doing the repetition. So you really just want to do what you have, folks. Couple, shake out your legs, flip through the TV if you've got it on. You don't have to listen to me. You just have to do whatever you've got, right? So we're, perform we're co competing against ourselves and our performance yesterday. That's it. You're not competing with anyone else in life, folks. The media uh, will try to pit you all against each other and try to make you think you're competing with everyone, trying to dogpile and climb over everyone to get to the top. And we'll leave that to the Americans, folks. Just joking, Americans. Uh, you're all good. But basically, folks, you should just be looking after yourself and trying to improve on your own performance. That's the way of life, folks, is you can only become a good person if you look after yourself. And, you know, people think, you know, uh, it's like, oh, I should only focus on society and, and focus on doing stuff outward. It just You're just going to become chewed up and spat out, folks. So that's what I'm here for, is to convince you to spend that time on yourself that will inevitably improve your mental health, improve your physical health. Uh, it is the panacea for health. You cannot be healthy without exercise. It's that simple. It's not debatable either. Like I always say, you can't argue with a fact. It's a fact. Should I point you into the amount of studies that have been done to prove that exercise is essential for your health? No. Get, get off your ass and go figure it out. You know what I mean? Like it's just, there are so many studies out there that you really have to be a fool to think, citation needed, why do I have to do exercise to be healthy? Folks, you just do. It's that simple. So you can do it very easily. Down, up, <laughs> down, up down up take a break sets of three that's probably pretty easy for most people to do if it isn't do one and take a break now my low, lower back's pretty sore i noticed that when i was uh, uh, jogging so i am going to be exclusively squatting wide now to really make sure that i am not bending my back at that position and that my back is going down as straight as possible and not leaning forward like i normally do same principle, same squat. Do what you have, I forgot to put my watch in. But it'll be a pretty quick session tonight because I'm keen to watch some TV. I'm knackered folks, my dog's kept me up all night. I'm making dog's collars out of crocodile hornback leather. Uh, I met my flight instructor for coffee and we went and cruised around a beetle because his cousin races beetles like my late cousin used to as well. And. Uh, and it's boiling hot to top it off with 90 degrees relative humidity, 32 degree day. My goodness gracious, I am knackered. I've been drinking so much water today. It's uh, fusing with my brain. Oh, it feels good. Went for a light jog, 6K dog walk, standard sort of stuff. As long as you keep it mobile, folks. Like I said, the numbers are arbitrary. I keep them just for something to do. I love data, I love collecting it. Um, but really, if you just come here, do a few minutes, do a few squats, you're good to go. Go and do whatever it is you're gonna do. And it just, it should ultimately feel good, folks. If for nothing else, that good UNICEF, UNICEF factor, patting yourself on your back, well done. You did that training and then you can go off again and do whatever it is you're doing. If you want to form stickler it, do that. Line up your feet properly. Really feel that weight going to the outside of your feet. And breathe, folks. For the time being, it's still free. Not going to be free for longer. Okay, so he's ready to roll. Yes. Oh, it's going to be nice and cool in the living room. Crank it on. Excuse me. Put on the air condition in my bedroom as well to crank that up because it gets the afternoon light. And by afternoon light, I mean afternoon inferno. <clears throat> and just casually do some squats, opening up my hips a little bit with this wider stance. 
If you want to take a wider stance, you'll just feel a little bit of a stretch there on the inside of your hips, which will be good for your hip mobility. <sighs> Unlocking your hips. Ow. My shorts forever getting tighter. I think I need to go to Big W and hope that inflation doesn't strike again. Last time I went there, it doesn't matter how many bills I have for my $8 shorts at Big W when there's no shorts able to be purchased as folks. This is inflation and this is just the beginning. In the end, uh, you'll be going to Maccas and say, I want a Big Mac and everyone wants a Big Mac, but there's only two Big Macs and 50 people there. So then they say, okay, one Big Mac's gonna be $1,000 and there'll still be two people that will pay that grand. Will you? Probably not. There will be uh, uh, Mike Cannon Brooks, the billionaire from Atlassian, and I don't know, one of the Murdoch kids or some other scumbag, Gina Reinhardt. They will be getting the Big Macs and you won't. And that's when people get pitchforks, folks, and uh, you know, stick it to them, literally. So things to look forward to for the next 10 years, folks. So that's why I'm trying to get you on a rolling start before society crumbles to become zen and one with yourself so you can be out at the beach fishing, surviving or snaring rabbits or eating fungi, whatever it is, if your vegan lifestyle permits that only, then by all means, find some tasty mushrooms. I'm a big fan of mushrooms myself, folks, and only the legal ones, of course. But uh, yeah, you know, blue meanies and gold tops, they're pretty fun as well. Anyway, let's crank out a few more. I'm gonna do a few push-ups as well, and then I'm out of here uh, to watch some TV in the air conditioning, drinking iced tea that I made with peppermint, which is good for the guts. Oh, wow, I get exhausted from talking, folks, so maybe you can just find somebody that's engaging as me to talk to and you can burn calories from that. Crazier things have happened in this world, folks. Maybe you just need shorts as tight as mine as well. It cuts off the circulation to your, to your serious arteries and blood vessels. Maybe that causes me um, to have some sort of energy burst as well. It's keeping all the, <laughs> keeping all the blood uh, in my brain. It doesn't allow it to travel back into my legs. Uh, what was I gonna say? I'm getting a... Ah, uh, what is it? A CT angiogram this week. So they shoot you up full of radioactive dye and put you under a bunch of x-rays to check out the health of your blood vessels. I feel like there's something kind of off in my heart. It could be psychosomatic. So the best way you can... <laughs> One thing I've learned in 20 years of working in healthcare, folks, that the doctor is only good as their diagnostics tool. And the best way, it ain't cheap, it's gonna be a $600 test, but a CT angiogram will tell you if your heart is decent, your blood vessels are right. And then I'll just know it's crazy day, psychosomatically telling myself that my heart's messed up and that the 5G uh, coronavirus shot is, uh, is, is actually not killing me like I thought it was. Anyway, just joking, folks. I do not believe that the coronavirus vaccine is anything to do with improving 5G signals. I think it's just a cash grab from Big Pharma. Now, I don't know why that's controversial to say anymore, folks, but I used to work for Big Pharma and they're all about the cash grab. So it's not beyond the wit of man to think, hey, Big Pharma's trying to fleece us for billions. It's like, yeah, that's how they make their money. That's exactly what they do. 0.3 correlation coefficient, FDA approved. Works 30% of the time, good to go. Billion dollar price tag, make sure it gets passed through the FDA. No worries, folks, this is big pharma. If all of a sudden you're getting Johnson & Johnson tattooed on your arm like a bravado thing, I got the vaccine, good on ya. <laughs> yeah, CT angiogram, mate, it's gonna be good. I uh, can't exercise, unfortunately, the night before, so that will means I'm out for Thursday night, 24 hours before, and I cannot exercise. I'm not sure what that's about. But, like I said, it will, it will be a good uh, test to see. It's funny. When you're as fit as I am, and you're just that in tune with your body, when something feels off, it usually is, right? So it could be something minor, but what's happened for the, since I had the coronavirus first jab, I got a, a cardio um, myocarditis, and uh, 
had medication for it for a while and it fell to right, stopped the medication and it's feeling like it did originally again. When I sneeze, it feels like something is tearing in my heart. And blood vessels do tear in your heart, but I don't think it should hurt quite this much if it didn't a year ago. And I just want to see what's the difference? What's the change from one year to another? I don't think sobriety is what's causing the issue, but you never know. My body could be being held together by uh, alcohol. <laughs> it's a uh, construct has been held together by ethanol for so long that it's starting to lose its bind. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna switch it up, do some push-ups now. My legs are telling me that I've had too many squats today. So, get on your knees, folks. Uh, where's my cat? Ah, yep, there we go. And back down to the ground cam. Now, I explain in many videos what I am doing here. If you need to know, ask me the question. If not, let's just do some push-ups and talk about heavy metal because Heavy metal's good. I've been listening to last year's Origin album, Ka Chaos Cosms. Uh, Benny Ben, how you going? Good to see you, just in time for some push-ups. Uh, the, yeah, 2021 album, it's like Cosmos or Chaos Cosm or something like that is the name of the album. I love Origin folks, my favorite death metal band, them and Hypocrisy. Uh, great bands, Origin obviously very different sound from Swedish death metal. Um, but definitely worth checking out that album. Unparalleled Universe is uh, the album before that, 2017, which was awesome as well. Let's do some sets of 10 here. Do some German volume training and push ups. Push ups off your knees in any shape or form. I've explained them many times. I'll have video links to exactly what I'm doing for push-ups so I don't have to say it again every time and can just uh, come here and talk shit to you guys, which is the plan, at least here in this beta phase, where we can insult each other and, uh, like I was saying before, can prophesize about my belief that Big Pharma is engaging us in a massive hustle at the moment with their classic 0.3 correlation coefficients that they can push something through to market and be like, yep, good enough for, for, for us folks, will you stamp it for FDA? And they're like, well, of course we will, for our normal fee, which is a billion dollars. <laughs> and it usually is because they know that they're gonna make it back. Yeah, new misery index, mate. Well, 2021, um, you can see the pandemic made them furious. Now let's do another 10. One, two, clench that butt. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Take a break and breathe. Ah. <sighs> so yeah, CT angiogram, nine o'clock on Friday, to see why I am feeling a shooting pain in the left side of my body when I uh, sneeze. I don't like it at all. It's only happened since I've been vaccinated. So it could just be me, tinfoil Dave, worried about something for no reason. But as somebody who's trained every day since he was eight years old doing competitive sports, it's usually not psychosomatic and there is something wrong when I feel something is wrong. So I hope it's just minor and not like needing a quadruple coronary artery bypass or something like that. That could really set me back. I think uh, start building me. Somebody else will have to do start building me and I'll have to start, start building me <laughs> again. But that's why I do this, folks, because I've had to start, start building me again, you know, so many times. Like, I've become the master at the restart. And every time it gets quicker, more efficient, and that clipping mic is doing my head in. Oh, I just hate it so much when I see anything clip. I know I couldn't be speaking to a better audience presently than the two people in here that are very, very aware of headroom and clipping in a channel and how much of it a no-no it is, but I've got a limiter and a compressor and a gate 
on the channel so there's it makes no sense that it should be clipping but like the milk crate that day jazz i just want to get that monitor and smash the living deity out of it calm blue ocean dave i haven't had my uh, therapy session in the the, uh, the the chest freezer today i think that's why but i probably should go and do that now anyway toes dug in tension in your butt one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, what else did I get? I got a linisher today, a good belt sander, because I'm making the dog collars with the hornback crocodile leather, so it's good to work that instead of uh, using a, a razor and cutting it out that took for ages. So that's been going pretty cool. And. I've got to get some fine leather to stick it on the back. Serenity now, insanity later. <laughs> Damn right. Oh man. I don't know, I think it all comes together with bad sleep last night. I usually take switch off devices and screens a good hour or two earlier. And last night I didn't. And I watched that Ray Donovan movie, which was cool. But uh, yeah, it messed me up. And then normally Keith will walk into the living room and f shake his head and it flaps his ears and makes a noise. And then he um, will want to get let out to take a leak. And last night at like 2.40, he just runs and flaps his ears and I walk out into the living room. He looks up at me and then walks back and hops back on the couch and goes back to sleep. And I'm like, you dick. Now I'm up and I couldn't get back to sleep. To too much Japanese nose rock. You don't hear any clipping. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, perfect. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear so I don't smash up this setup right now. Anyway, let's do push-ups. Pretend there's no clipping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Ah. Oh. Feels good. I'm going to try my studio outside tomorrow with the lights on for chin-ups. See how that goes. Still doing beta testing on that way one though because it's just... Like here it's fine. Like these LED spotlights are like three feet away from me. So, and I've got uh, a compact fluorescent bulb up there to backlight the green screen. But it's... um. It doesn't look so bright on the outside. It's coming through fine. Sweet. That's what I want to hear. Uh, I think it's only when I screech like an autist that it uh, clips out. So I'll refrain from any autistic screeching for the time being. No, I don't believe I'm autistic. No, I don't believe I'm any of the titles that I've been given to me over the last 20 years by psychiatrists. I think head shrinks just label you with whatever flavor du jour is going around at the time. And then when you ask them about it and you say, hey, I think that's bullshit, they'll be like, yeah, could be. <laughs> it's like, cool, thanks. They're like, that'll be $500, thanks. <laughs> Sweet. The system works, folks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think I'm gonna have to switch to cycling soon from running. My big toe and my knees are starting to become sore. And since peptides are off the menu, then uh, cycling might have to be done. I've got an a electromagnetic resistance gear set called uh, a Yahoo Kicker. And you hook your bike up to it and it's got a game called Swift, which is an app where you can race different global short courses, London, Paris, France, Richmond, Virginia, New York, a whole bunch of other places in there as well and some virtual places so I might have to get back onto there to make them up the most of my cardio because I still have to always walk the dogs and that's like a minimum of 6k's a day um, and it just sucks the orthopedic surgeons the college of orthopedic surgeons stopping nandrolo decanoate being legal because it's the obvious panacea remineralizing bones producing synovial fluid to lubricate your joints 
rebuilding hard tissue way quicker than it would be normally. Yeah, sounds like everything that should be scheduled, right? I don't know about that. It's just so funny. You'd think they'd be able to make money off it, but anything that's not patented, they're not going to make money off. So they do make money off sawing off your limbs and replanting it with dodgy implants, though, folks. Uh, working in surgery with orthopedic surgeons for years, and they make a fortune. And in the industry, they're known as hacks because they are quite literally hacks. They're sawing stuff up and sl sl you know medicinal sledgehammering different things into your body if you're wondering why you've got so much swelling when you come out it's because they've gone to town on you <laughs> yeah it is it's funny in the uk like i think in the uk they're pretty sensible with it like okay distribution that's where the punishment comes in but possession they're just like uh, can you make something illegal that's like it's a pretty victimless crime right but um like anything it's just because because there is no problems with it legislation hasn't caught up and it's still set from 50s and 60s stuff so it's gonna like i said like um decentralized lab work you will find that hormones is going to be the next big thing because mood is quite obviously linked to hormones and if you balance them out it's like dino in a car right you can tune yourself and that's what i was getting into but like i said there's a difference between morality and obedience right but i was definitely on to something folks as you can probably imagine uh, generally don't do things that don't have a purpose right and this certainly has purpose and it was certainly amazing <laughs> it was the best year <laughs> that i can ever remember having where uh, i've never felt better <sighs> um a way to explain it with male hormones is uh tenacity um motivation like uh discipline and motivation is just at that next level you've got an axe to grind with life and as soon as you wake up you've got your eyes on the prize and you've got that goal and you just get at it so i'm not sure exactly why that would be so freaky for the the man for the system you know for society i mean it could make some megalomaniacs out there but it Generally speaking, megalomaniacs don't need any other exogenous testosterone or hormones to be the way they are and probably would use something illicit anyway. But um, it's a crazy difference and it's very misunderstood. Like people always think bodybuilding and I think that's where it get, gets its tarnish in its reputation where something like exogenous testosterone where bodybuilders use between half a gram and a gram a week whereas they're saying male testes at say 16 year old produce about 150 to 175 milligrams of testosterone a week right so a third of the amount of the lower lower range of bodybuilders exogenous testosterone usage so um like at wellness like you can get it already if you've got money which i do you can go and get it from doctors but as everything folks i can't stress this enough doctors don't know everything everybody thinks that they're these gods of humanity that know everything but they're very all they know is what they've learned and all they can learn is what they've been instructed by various bodies, Def Ameri American and Australian Medical Association, and they can't go outside those guidelines. So when you ask them about something that's slightly left field, they're not going to be able to answer anything for you folks. Like they, they will honestly just say, I don't know, you know, and a, a, um, a few doctors will, but they're usually not from Australia. So they can qualify as a nootropic? 100%, mate, 100% nootropic. Like I can't stress enough if that feeling that you get, I don't see how it can be negative. And there was that old studies from the 50s saying that, oh, testosterone is like fuel on the fire to cancer. Like that's been thoroughly debunked. It's absolutely not true, right? 
it's just like anything. It's just like sugar is like fire um, fuel on a fire to cancer. Like it's um, you know one of those classic studies with n equals three, and they're trying to say it's valid because the five people or three people that it was tested on makes that a legitimate study. It's just not true at all. And um, it's quite obviously not the truth when there are those wellness physicians now who do testosterone replacement therapies for men over 40s. If it was a heightened risk of cancer, it wouldn't be legislation. They wouldn't be able to do it. So it's bullshit. But that's what I'm saying, folks. <laughs> Citation needed. And a lot of the time, if you've got a medical study from the 50s, might be a little bit out of date by now. <laughs> but what would I know? Anyway, I've done a few push-ups. I want to go and watch TV and chill out. I'd have done a few push-ups, done a few uh, squats, and that's what Start Building Me is about, folks. Take it easy. I won't go on a further tirade about how outdated medicine is, but I will say this. Curative medicine is dead and preventative medicine is what it's all about. So start building yourself and you'll never have to see a doctor again. Until then, drink your peppermint tea, have your vitamins and believe in the gordomania and uh, come and train with Start Building Me every day. Take it easy, folks. Have a good one.